Hi, and welcome to Conversations with B'nai B'rith International. I'm CEO Dan Mariashi. Thanks for spending some time with us today. If you enjoy our conversation series, make sure you never miss an interview by subscribing to the B'nai B'rith YouTube channel and liking us on Facebook. And of course, be sure to visit our website, b'naibrith.org, to learn more about our humanitarian and advocacy efforts across the globe. Well, you may not know the name Alsi Perry, but in Israel, the former basketball center is a legend. Many consider him the Israeli Shaquille O'Neal or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, not just because of his skills on the court, but also because of his charisma and the fame and glory that followed Perry after he left the U.S. to play center for Israel's celebrated Maccabi Tel Aviv Basketball Club. The six foot ten Southern Baptist raised African American player may have seemed a bit out of place in the Jewish homeland at first, but that didn't last long. Perry quickly became a force to be reckoned with, leading the fledgling Maccabi Basketball Club to its first Euro League championship in 1977 and again in 1981. Through archival clips and images, present day interviews with Perry, his family and friends, former Maccabi teammates, and more. Award-winning writer, director, and producer Donnie Menken tells the captivating emotional story of an Israeli sports legend following the twists and turns, the ups and the downs of an incredible athlete and Israeli cultural icon. We're fortunate enough to have Danny Menken with us today to talk about Alsi, his honest portrait of an inspiring life journey and the behind-the-scenes experiences that helped bring Alsi Perry's life to the big screen. Lincoln is a twice Israeli Academy Award winning filmmaker of 39 Pounds of Love and Is That You, among others. 39 Pounds of Love was sold to HBO documentary films and shortlisted for the Academy Awards. He's a speaker and a film juror at international festivals around the world, as well as a film professor at universities across the United States. Danny, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Dan. Pleasure being with you. Well, this is a documentary on the triumphs and shortcomings of an incredible person, Alsi Perry, and his unlikely rise to Israeli stardom and his eventual conversion to Judaism. So the question has to be, what inspired you to examine Alsi's life and what made you choose him, especially with all of his trials and tribulations? Or was it something that just drew you to his journey? Tell us. Uh, for me, the answer is very simple. You know, Alsi and all these heroes from Maccabi Tel Aviv in 1977 were my childhood heroes. You know, they were my idols. You know, we all adored them. They really, in many, many ways, changed the country. So uh, when I was approached by the Israeli TV at the beginning, and then uh, when I made the American version for On the Map, I always knew that the real story I want to tell is, is Olsi. And when I started to develop my international career as a writer, director, uh, I started to write the story of Olsi as a feature film, narrative film, which I'm still in the process of making. And at some point, Olsi shared with me that he has a daughter, which nobody knew about, that he hasn't seen for 20 years. So the documentarian in me, even though I wrote a feature film narrative, and I'm, and I'm doing both narrative and documentary, but the documentarian in me said, you know, also let's uh, go out there and look for her, reach out and tell your story. And he said then after, I'm not exaggerating, close to 20 years of me chasing after his life rights, uh, he told me, tells me, you know what? I think this is the time for me to share the story because I don't want my daughter uh, to learn about me from Wikipedia. And um, as a filmmaker, Olsi's story had all the elements that I'm looking for. Um, it's a story of triumph, redemption, uh, highs, lows, crime, love story, all the things that I love. And uh, in many ways, I, I, I always admired him. You know, there is something about his, uh, I think you mentioned it before, the charisma that he has, that even though he fell into very 
deep valleys, he still was loved all the time by everyone in, the, in, in, in Israel. And I thought this would be a great story for me to bring to the United States because it is an uh, un, undiscovered story, you know, so far until now. You know, we're so accustomed, uh, of course, in Israel, um, usually it's, it's politicians who are household names. Uh, but in Israel, Alsi Perry, uh, like Tal Brody uh, and Mickey Berkovich, and of course, a long, long line of other athletes, we could go down the list. These are also household, household names. I'd like to get into the film a little bit later, but I want to talk about your background and your decision to become a filmmaker. Um, how do you think your approach to Alsi and your other projects, and you're an, an award-winning filmmaker, differs from that of others who make films and documentaries? You know, in, in my story, <laughs> I really wanted to be like them. You know, uh, the child in me wanted to be an athlete. I wanted to be a, a, a basketball player. I was not tall enough. Then I wanted to be a soccer player. I think I was pretty good, but not good enough. <laughs> so they uh, they started to launch in the 90s uh, what it called the Sport Channel, which is kind of like ESPN in Israel. And the whole TV network um, have changed. Until then, there was just one channel. So that's why Maccabi Tel Aviv was the team of the country. There was one channel. Everybody was watching it. And I came from the love for sport, but then I fell in love with the love of storytelling. And for me, telling stories about sport just combined everything that uh, that I I like. And uh, I didn't know that there is a name to what I do, and that's called writer director. I didn't even know that. I was just, you know, putting together the, the stories and um, and enjoying them. So that's how I became a filmmaker, and uh, happily, my first international film was very, very successful. And as you mentioned, was sold to HBO and was shortlisted here for the Oscars. And um, since then, I'm I'm uh, doing. You know, uh, my profession is my hobby, so I'm, I'm, I feel very lucky. And, I'm, and 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 in hindsight, I'm, I'm very happy that I'm not an athlete because I would probably have to retire. And, if I was a soccer player or a basketball player, and I, as a filmmaker, I'm still relatively young. So it, there is there is there is something good about not becoming a soccer player or basketball player. I'm still trying with tennis. Uh, I don't know, but uh, you know, I, 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 I this became my hobby, and directing became my profession. Well, if you're good at tennis, perhaps somebody will do a, a documentary about your your tennis playing later on. Who knows? Uh, well, clearly, clearly your work and the idea of doing this particular project caught the eye of Nancy Spielberg, who's your executive producer, uh, and, and others uh, who felt that you were really on to something. So I want to talk about the film. As you comb through all the clips and the photos of Alsi from his playing days and interviewed Alsi himself, how did your narrative about his story take shape? What, what became clear? about his legacy in Israel, both from a sports perspective and a cultural societal one as well. And, and what's, the, what's the central motif? You've talked about his daughter, uh, but what's the central motif? You know, in many ways, I, I, I feel um, like some of my other work, when, when you have a story that involves some kind of a road trip that somebody is taking, you want him to go through a change and have some kind of uh, redemption. So you see a character that at the beginning of his life, he has basketball as the one thing that can get him out of the ghetto, can get him out of drugs. And then when he's becoming the hero of a country, he never thought he's going to play him because he was the last guy to be cut from the Knicks. He thought he's going to be playing in the NBA. He was already with Phil Jackson and Earl Monroe in, in, in 1976. And then when he's the last one to be cut, he found himself in a country he didn't believe he'll ever be in. And he's really falling in love with the country and he's falling in love with the top model of, of Israel. And I sense that the one thing that I can find about this story is finding a family. 
you know, because he found Israel as a family. He's found the manager um, that, you know, recorded him as his father figure. Uh, in many ways, he's, he found Tammy as his new family. And then he's looking for his daughter and he's trying to make peace with his son that he wasn't present in his life. And he wanted to make peace with himself. So that's the one, let's say, nugget that I found out that, you know, I can maybe relay and uh, I can involve and, and, and work the script around because Ossie had so many elements. Is it really just a sports story? Probably not. Is it just a love story? Not. Is it relationship between a country and African-American? Maybe. Is there the question of racism that existed in, for sure, in the United States and uh, in many ways in Israel? Um, Ossie saw that nobody, uh, nobody judged his colors. All those things, you know, um, were fascinating for me. And I thought, you know, in, uh, the nice thing about documentaries is that there are elements that you cannot script them. You know, it happened to me with Ossie or with 39 Pounds of Love or with, or with On the Map, you know. It's like, you know, people cannot write those things, but they just happened. And then, you know, uh, I, I found it fascinating to put it in the shape of a movie with three acts and a character, and um, and uh, hopefully it will inspire the audience just like it inspired me. Because it takes so much thought to make a movie; it takes time, energy, and money. A lot of those. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm I'm very happy when I hear people say, you know, this film impacted me um, in, in the way that it did. You know, so it's. I'm very fortunate to, to be able to do this profession. Well, tell us a little about uh, all these uh, experiences growing up uh, in the United States from uh, Newark, uh, played high school in Newark. I think he went to Bethune Cookman for a couple of years, um, but he played on those hard scrabble uh, basketball courts in the, in the inner city, um, played in the Rucker League in, in Harlem. Um, Tell us a little about that environment and um, how that also shaped uh, who Alsi Perry is. You know, Alsi mentioned it in, in the movie that he was raised in, in, in an environment that um, had a lot of racism. You know, I did not show it in the movie, but he was beaten uh, when he was in college just because he wanted to go to a bar. And just because he was black. And it's interesting that um, in Israel is where he's found his home. In Israel, he said, for the first time in my life, you know, he's telling us, nobody judged my color. Everybody just embraced me. And that's why Ossie Perry lives in Israel until today. You know, that's why I asked him um, at some point and uh, he said that, you know, after he's going to pass away, he wants to be buried in Israel. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, there is a lot of misconception about the country, about our country. People hear about uh, what happens in the news. Uh, but what Olsi Perry is telling us and what his story is conveying, this is really the true, the true story of Israel that I know of. You know, without politics, you can be from the left, you can be from the right, and still understand that um, the way Ossi uh, view Israel is in many ways the big majority of the truth. And unfortunately, what we do hear about sometimes in the news is the, like the very extreme situation that um, doesn't apply to to the way our country is. So that's the importance of this film in some ways for me, because, you know, through the eyes of an African-American basketball player, you can learn a little bit about uh, the beauty of our country. Well, tell us, as a basketball fan, uh, tell us about Alcee Perry, the basketball player. He's 6'10", the last guy cut from, from that particular, in that season, from the Knicks, he's a he's a pretty good ball player. So uh, tell us how he quickly became uh, a force leading Maccabi uh, to its Euroleague title and and to the fame that it ultimately uh, achieved 
as a result of his being on that team. So Jews are known for a lot of things, but uh, playing uh, basketball and taking rebounds is not one of them. So what we <laughs> like to say, if you can beat them, just join them. <laughs> and you were allowed in the 70s to have one foreign player. And at that time, Israel was playing um, against the Russians, the same players that beat the United States in Munich. And there was no chance by any means <laughs> that somebody will assume a capital V will beat them because, you know, they were the strongest team outside of the NBA and then Cheska Moscow. And to make the story even better, they didn't even want to play against Israel because they didn't recognize Israel rights to exist. So they have to play in a neutral site in Belgium and there were 500 people, 49, 98 of them were, were Jews and Israelis and two KGB that cheered for, for the Russians. So with all the enthusiastic and professionally, because of Paul Perry uh, was a, just a wonderful uh, tall guy that can shoot from the far. Uh, professionally, I can maybe compare him to Kevin Durant. And... Um, you know, he's tall, but he has a really soft hand. And thanks to him, Maccabi Tel Aviv is making the history. I mean, there is no doubt, and all the players, Mickey, Tal, you mentioned, all of them will say, without Rossi Perry, he could not have done that. Uh, but the beauty is that after that, when he's getting an offer to go back to the NBA to play for Golden State Warriors, he says, there is no way I'm leaving Israel. This is my home. I'm staying here. This is my home. I don't care about my dreams. I don't care about anything. I am here. And he's changing his name to Elisha ben Avraham. He's becoming Jewish. He's joining the Israeli army. And, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, he's becoming really, I will say, the poster boy of Israel and him and, and, and Tami ben Amin. His girlfriend becomes like they becoming the power couple of the country. I mean, no, I have to say, it doesn't get better than this as a storyteller, right? <laughs> I have to say, really, at, at this point, I mean, the, the film you did on that season on the map is is simply a a thrilling film to watch uh, because you you feel as you build up the the story leading to the championship game in that at that neutral site. Um, you can you can feel every bit of it, and you feel like you're actually in the in the stands uh, when this when this happens. So we've we've talked about his his great achievements, and you you cover it in the film. You also deal with some of his personal setbacks, and let's let's talk about that. After his time in Israel concluded in the 1980s, he returned to the states, ran into some trouble. Describe some of those hardships, including. His addiction to painkillers, his heroin use, and, and how is, has Alsi reflected on these hard times? And what do you think others who have faced these obstacles can learn from Alsi's perseverance, which you really uh, outlined very, very well in, in the film? You know, I think that was the toughest part for me as a filmmaker to portray, and the toughest for Alsi to talk about. And that's why Alsi did not want to make this film for almost 20 years. And I had to be very, very consistent in asking him to participate in this film about uh, his life. And I mean, simply also could not give up uh, on basketball. And when he started to take painkillers, um, you know, that uh, led into addiction and that led into the black market. And that led him into, unfortunately, a crime and crime scenes that he didn't want to do, but but when you're addicted, you're doing stupid things, and the uh, the one thing that everybody remembers in Israel that there is a game against Real Madrid and everyone is watching it live on TV and also it doesn't show up. Nobody knows why, and then the story is coming out, and he's been sentenced for ten years in jail. Uh, because he was dealing with the wrong people. And um, in many ways, the, the prison 
and jail saved his life. And he got a second chance, came back to Israel to surprise the manager on the show, which I'm not going to spoil the whole movie, but it led to another very dramatic uh, moment with, his, uh, with his, the love of his life. And, uh, and from that moment and on, Olsi Perry and just received a second chance. So what I hope people will learn from this film that whatever you have, whatever obstacles you have and addictions and challenges you have in life, you know, there is always a new day and there is always a possibility for a second chance, no matter, no matter what happens in your life. Where is Alsi today? What's he, what's he doing? So Alsi Perry is in Israel. He's running a basketball camp. He's coaching the youth of Maccabi Tel Aviv and he's part of the organization of Maccabi. And uh, we are planning to do a, a road trip a journey with him uh, and with the movie in the United States uh, this coming fall. Hopefully we'll maybe come to Washington. So whoever wants to invite us, please log on into our website, heyjudeproductions.com and contact us. And we would love to... Uh, to bring Olsi, the movie, to bring on the map to the community and uh, to show a wonderful side of uh, Israel and to inspire people just like we were inspired in, uh, in, in our childhood. Well, we talked about it uh, a few minutes ago, but I'll, maybe I'll ask it in a different way. Um, how do you think the film has impacted people abroad who may not be familiar with this story? Is there some kind of cross-cultural uh, aspect about his journey that, that will resonate with audiences across the globe, uh, particularly not only in, in the Jewish community, but beyond. Yeah. I mean, in many ways, the fact that, you know, Olsi Perry fell in love with Israel and Israel fell in love with him in the film uh, speak, for it, speak for itself. Um, I do live in LA now. Uh, I work in what people like to call Hollywood. I mean, I'm independent, but uh, and and uh, I mean, I'm a big patriot. I, I love my country, and uh, I hope through the eyes of the incredible story and his journey, people will also be able to to see that you know this is really what almost all the, of the country is interested in. You know, we're into sport, uh, we're into humanity, we're into kindness. And uh, I will not say that all of us, but the big majority of us are. And um, I, I really hope that uh, by watching some of the films that we're bringing from Israel, people will see that side of us. Well, having followed his career, Really, from the beginning, um, I know in, in Israel, when you mention Alsi's name, uh, people's eyes just light up. He, uh, he's a, a very popular guy, and uh, it's a, really a, a tremendous story uh, that you've told here. And, and my guess is uh, that once you go around with Alsi, as you take the film around the country, around our country, and around the world, I hope you'll be doing that as well, um, that uh, people will, will sense some of that. Um, specialness uh, ab about this man. The film is Alsi, the story of basketball star Alsi Perry. And uh, remind me again, Danny, it's heyjudeproductions.com. They can find out all information about the film. Just like the Beatles song, heyjudeproductions.com. And it comes from the line in the song, take a sad song and make it better. You know, that's what inspired me to name uh, the company uh, as well. And we have a non-for-profit on the map foundation to tell inspiring stories. And um, yeah, we're trying uh, humbly as much as we can to do good and uh, bring positive and inspirational stories to the world. Well, Danny, thank you for being with us today, sharing Alsi Perry's story so beautifully. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much, Danny. It was a pleasure being with you. Well, our thanks to award-winning writer, director, and producer Danny Menken for joining us and delving into the life of the unlikely Israeli basketball star, Alsi Perry. And thank you 
for tuning into this conversation with Benet Briss. If you uh, enjoyed this interview, make sure you catch all of our programs by subscribing to the B'nai B'rith YouTube channel and liking us on Facebook. And be sure to visit our website, B'nai to learn more about our important work, including our efforts supporting Ukrainian refugees in Poland, Moldova, and Romania, as well as those within Ukraine's borders. For my guests, Danny Mankin, and for B'nai B'rith, I'm Dan Mariashin. Join us again soon.